four different daytime running light designs you can play around with. First time we see that in the vehicle. This is the Audi Q4 e-tron and yeah, it's not the most important feature, but it's a unique feature, definitely. This is the SUV style. You can also get it as a sport bag with a chopped off rear for a sportier look. And we can see here in the front, what's that? 2D Audi rings because the sensors are being hidden behind that. But from distance, they look 3D-ish once again. The single frame grille is closed for better wind efficiency. You don't need it for the all electric vehicles and it looks brighter on the inside than it looks on the outside. Lower contrasting bar and the color for today is called Gisa Blue, both for me and for the vehicle. 4 meters 59 or 181 inches counts the same for the SUV and the Sportback style. The Sportback of course a little more spectacular with the rear ending whereas the SUV here has the more upright style. Really interesting design lines here in the front right there. You can see it, it's like curved here and then on the rear end once again right there. And there are more wind efficiency tricks, for example a so-called turbulator edge here at the side mirror. It's just subtle but supposed to bring two kilometers additional range per battery loading. Interesting. 19 to 21 inch wheels. These are the biggest ones, 21 inch, and also in the aerodynamic styling. This being the S-Line exterior means we have also painted wheel arches. Usually they would come in black plastic, but they're also available in the vehicle color if you want a more uniform look. S-Line exterior badge right here. That means also a sportier lower bumper here, for example. It's still somewhat a compact size. It is on the same platform, just like the VW ID4, the VW electric SUV, and also built at the same Zwickau plant in Germany. The battery comes with 52 or 77 kilowatt hours net, and recharging is for the bigger battery, 11 kilowatt AC and 125 kilowatt DC charging, and supposed to give you a range then with the bigger battery of around 500 kilometers and 300 miles. That counts for the rear-wheel drive model. There will both be rear-wheel drive only model and also a top all-wheel drive model. And 50 Quattro is the all-wheel drive model. So then one electric motor in the front, one in the rear. 6.2 seconds is the acceleration figure then, whereas the other models are more like eight or nine seconds. So this is the fastest model. However, if you go rear-wheel drive only, there's one advantage. The turning circle is a little bit more narrow, so than 10.2 meters in the turning circle. That's an advantage for the rear wheel drive model. And maybe also more driving fun in a way of agility, getting out of the corners. Here, of course, more power. And when you have the all-wheel drive model, you still have a rear wheel bias. The rear electric motor always delivers more performance. Then this light strip goes all the way around the vehicle, but only if you have the matrix LED option in the front, then you automatically also get the extensive lighting in the rear. Other than that, it would start here on the outside and then with the extended option you also get the inside strip with that and that of course looks really spectacular. Again the contrasting lower end here with the silver I think that fits very well to the vehicle. I would like to know from you guys which one would you go for here the SUV or rather the Sportback building style. And the top speed for the top model 180 kilometers over 112 miles per hour. And then we have cascading turning indicators in the front, but only if you pick the matrix LED option. And the same accounts for the rear, but in the rear you can even better see the cascading function. And here we go now with the Sportback version in a silver style, also with the S-Line package. We also have different wheels. These are the non-aero wheels, but they are also the big ones here in 21 inch. And then of course the big difference is here the falling roof line. And the interesting thing is, I mean, they have the same length on the exterior, but the Sportback somehow looks tinier then because it has this sportier shape right here. Really looking forward to your comments. Which one do you find more beautiful? And in the rear, it's actually more or less the same. Also right here. And we have this wing here. And overall, the Sportback is the more aerodynamic form. And sadly, by the way, there is no trunk here. The only thing under the hood that is interesting is that you can refill some wiper fluid. I got the key. I got the secret. <laughs> That's pretty normal. But then door closing sound, famous feature here on Autogefühl channel. Mmm, that sounds solid. Yes, Thomas proof. Then, inside of the doors, 
somewhat soft touch at the inside right there, a little bit softer here for your elbows. And this being the ID4 platform, it does, you know, doesn't resemble at all from the ID4, so really good build, build quality on the interior. Steering wheel with a futuristic style here with flat bottom and top. This is an option, so you don't have to go for that. You can also get a round steering wheel if you like it. They are not available with animal free materials yet, but they are working on it. Capacitive buttons here on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah, you have to see how that one turns out while driving. Seats, there's a normal seat and a sport seat. You can see the sport seat right here. It has the integrated head restraint. And then you can also get animal free seats. There's a fabric seat option available which would be standard for the S-Line and also using 26 PET bottles for the recycling share. And then you will also have microfiber on the inside, leatherette on the outside seat. And in the US, customers will start with a full leatherette seat, also in a high grade. This being the optional animal skin option because Audi is not that consistent yet for their test vehicles they have then here on location. Then getting inside, so, you know, very easy entry. By the way, floor mats and also the material below that is always with recycling share. So that's also good to know. And why not bring down the CO2 output here? And the factory is, by the way, also powered by renewable energy. Then steering wheel up and down, in and out. And you can see here the 2D Audi logo we see on the outside is also present here. But ah, that looks cheap. Seriously, I mean. When you have three-dimensional logos, like really something to touch and to see, that's definitely better. So, hmm, yeah, not, I mean, the steering wheel form is cool and futuristic, but the capacitive button style here, these will be illuminated then uh, when, you, when you drive the vehicle. Um, there we go. So you can turn it on. There you can see um, it's basically still one button, but then, you know, different fields, and then it also catches fingerprints. And then the 2D Audi, ah, uh, sorry. Usually I'm always super enthusiastic about the Audi interiors. I mean, basically, yes, here the same. But the steering wheel, the stuff here, hmm, not happy with that. Soon more to the virtual instruments here. 10.25 inch, a little bit smaller than we used to know. Usually Audi virtual cockpit always came in 12.3 inch. And then standard infotainment system, also different styles available here. Seating position is actually, you know, we know it from these sport seats, so they're not special new or something. The base seats will be a little bit more comfort. Comfortable here, they you know hold you a little bit tighter, but you have this upright seating position. It's not too long on the exterior, but you already have a lot of space here in the front. That's good, and a lot of headroom. Even though I'm one meters eighty six or six foot one, frequent subscribers no. Interior overview, of course, with nice ambient lighting right there. I like that colors can be adjusted. Left side ten point two five inch digital instruments. And yeah, once again, a little bit small for an Audi, I think. Right side, either you have a 10.1 inch screen or this 11.6 inch screen. So that's the bigger one. Soon also more details to that. And here in the lower part, you have the climate unit. Still manual. Thank you. This is a reason to go for the Audi here for the Q4 e-tron and not for the ID4 to have this manual climate unit still. Thank you. However, they save the buttons. For example, they still have a button here, but then one button for drive select, for the hazard lights, and for ESC off. It's one button, but different touch areas. Hmm, I don't know. Suspension-wise, by the way, that's interesting. You have a base suspension, you have a sport suspension, standard for the S-Line, and an optional adaptive suspension. And when you have the adaptive suspension here, then when you, for example, go to dynamic mode, it gets stiffer, comfort mode gets a little bit softer, so the adaptive suspension will give you the best comfort. And the rest of this floating console here, very interesting. So that's, yeah, that overlaps quite deeply. Very interesting. There's a volume slider like here for the passenger. Then start stop button at the left side and you have the shifting lever like this for the drive mode, reverse or uh, neutral like this. But you can also pull it back all the way and then you have, so it's actually quite easy solution. Below, there's much space available. They could have left it out completely, but they want a more cooling effect, they said. Smartphone right here, either USB-C connectors or also wireless connection for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto is available. And then you have adaptive cup holders right here and a lot of space underneath this armrest. So, wow, that goes quite deep in there. 
and the rear view camera, also with a fake drone view from above. This a very good resolution. You can also switch to different modes here, for example, for the wheels. And the rear, oh, you can see I left my backpack in there. Hmm, dangerous. And then the rest of the infotainment system, we know it from Audi. It's a good menu structure, easy to navigate, and you can also put your digital hotkeys here on the left side. And the Apple CarPlay duration looks like this. And I'm really looking forward here to the new Sonos sound system. First time manufacturer works together with them. And yeah, it has this typical bass heavy Sonos um, surround effect, but oh, actually quite nice first impression from the system. Here you can use the buttons at the steering wheel as sliders. That's possible, but also with clicking. So both is possible. And you have somewhat of a clicking sound, but still, the old way was better. These are the instruments, and by the way, when you put in the drive or B mode, B mode is a stronger recuperation mode, so you can always drive in that one, or use the shifting pedals to change the recuperation. Here, the rest of the digital instruments, like this, you can switch around the views, what you want to have, and of course, the map view, also available all over the place. You can get an optional head-up display, also with augmented reality function. Audi, however, developed their own software for that, but it will be so more than similar with these digital arrows you can see, like we know from our VW ID4 test drive. Now to the rear doors. Nice door closing sound here as well, but then the rear covering. This is hard pack, whereas in the front it's somewhat soft touch at least, but there the thing, a more crucial area where it's soft. Then you can see there's no middle tunnel using the EV building platform. That's of course quite pretty cool. Let's see how much legroom we have. Once again, when we think about there's not such a long vehicle, there we have it. You know, that's the good thing about the EV building platform. And you know, from the outside, it has some kind of van-ish look. That's what you get then. That's the advantage. Pretty cool. Also, headroom-wise, no problem. So a lot of space to move around you freely. That's why the middle seat can also be used very well. Uh, yeah, this is more a Jonas <laughs> our cameraman. A position um, where the passenger seat is way back, but this here is I would be driving. So feeling quite comfortable here in the rear. Isofix at the outsides each, and then you fold the seats already from here like this. And in the middle part, we have adaptive cup holders. So pretty convincing here for the rear seats. Now I switched here to the Sportback interior. The front is just the same, and here in the rear, you do lose a little bit of headroom like the here, and when I lean all the way back, then I do hit the ceiling. So that's the thing, it's totally fine, but with the SUV, a little bit more headroom. I need to touch them one more time. At least we have the good, good boy, three-dimensional Audi rings here at the rear. Ah, nice to see them. I do miss them in the front though. <laughs> the electric hatch it would be standard for the sport pack, option here for the SUV. Let's put the backpack inside. Um, yeah, already the SUV is so much cut off here, but you see you have to push the backpack then a little bit to the inside, then it's actually okay. Both around 500 liters, up to 1,500 liters approximately. The sport pack has even a little bit more of loading volume because it's a little bit longer right here in this area. That's interesting. Then charging cables underneath, that would be a spot to put them, and even more space here. So once again, using that smells a little bit down there. <laughs> so, and here we can also fold the seats like this. And there you can see that once again, this electric building platform is being used very, very well because that's really a lot to put things in. And the trunk here of the e-tron Sportback, Q4 e-tron Sportback, there we go. It's actually the same. You lose a little bit of height right here, then you have a little bit more length there. So, yeah, more or less the same. It's just, you know, in this very front area. This is where it's a little bit limited in height, but overall, I think, still a good compromise. Now, to our conclusion for today with the Audi Q4 e-tron, both with the SUV and the Sportback. First of all, as for the realistic range figures, what we know from the ID4 more or less come with 4 kilometers or 250 miles because these top range figures only with the rear wheel drive model with the big battery and of course under ideal conditions. Then first of all the exterior, the question is sportback or SUV building style, this looks more spectacular, sportier and the car looks smaller with it. It's really interesting, which one would you go for? 
I'm not sure. I think I would still keep the SUV building style because it's also a little bit more practical on the inside. However, I really have to say that the sport bag takes away this kind of vanish atmosphere on the exterior. So, if I now think about it, maybe I would go with the sport bag here. Really tough question. On the interior, it's more or less the same. Yes, a little bit limitations here in the rear, but that's about it. We do see some parts on the interior which could could have been done better. I think the virtual cockpit needs to be the standard 12.3 inch size. The capacitive buttons, not a fan of that. Other than that, way better than in the VW ID4, I think. Especially because you have the manual climate unit here still. They do also have animal free materials for the seats. However, the whole concept is not animal free yet. But they already made some progress as for more sustainability in production, for example. Really looking forward to drive this one. I mean, it's a good size, promising range figures. I think exactly the right offer they need right now. Prices will be starting approximately about 40,000 euros or dollars. But then for the entry model, when you pick this one here with a Quattro with all-wheel drive and more power and more equipment, you can easily also end about 70k. That's my estimation. So what do you think? Leave us your comments about the Q4 e-tron. See you next time.